Uh, my name is Abigail Salome Inapat. I'm the senior e-learning officer at Soroti University, which is in Soroti City in Eastern Uganda. In this short video, I will show you some of the technologies which Soroti University has adopted as a critical response to the COVID-19 pandemic, so as to enable teaching and learning to continue. As you are aware, the government of Uganda imposed a national lockdown in March 2021 as a means to curb the spread of COVID-19. As part of the lockdown, educational institutions were closed. So Roti University moved very quickly to identify various technologies that could be deployed to ensure continuity of teaching and learning during the lockdown. Some of the technologies that the university identified included a learning management uh, system and the use of real-time conferencing tools for live lectures. So Roti University has a model-based e-learning platform in which lecturers have uploaded interactive content and the students can access that content anywhere, any time. As part of this demonstration, I will show you the collaborative content that is uploaded in the Soroti University Learning Management System. But the lecturers in the university also use real-time conferencing tools for live lectures. Particularly, we use Zoom and the big blue button. And still as part of this demonstration, you will see and watch video clips of lectures that have been conducted via Zoom. But to support the lecturers and students in using uh, the various technologies, the e-learning unit has created WhatsApp groups for students and for lecturers. In these groups, the students and the faculty uh, ask questions and make inquiries, and the staff in the e-learning unit respond to those inquiries so that the students and the faculty are well supported in their use of these technologies. But the university has also partnered with telecom companies to offer zero rated data so that the students and lecturers can be able to use these technologies. I'll now show you a demonstration of the interactive course content that is uploaded in the Soroti University Learning Management System. And as you can see, this is the URL to the e-learning platform, https elearning.san.ac.ug, and I'll go straight to this platform for that demonstration. So this is the homepage, um, the login page of the Soroti University Learning Management System. For you to be able to access the content and the courses in it, you need a username, and a password to do so. So I am logging into my account in the learning management system right now. So in the LMS, we have the two schools set up, their programs and the courses that are taught in those programs. So we have the School of Health Sciences and the School of Engineering and Technology. If we look at the School of Health Sciences, there are two programs offered, Bachelor of Nursing Science Bachelor of Medicine in Surgery. And in the School of Engineering, we have the Bachelor of Engineering in Electronics and Computer Engineering. And for each of those programs, there are courses that have been set up and content uploaded for the students to access. I'll show you just one course in the Bachelor of Engineering in Electronics and Computer Engineering, and that is the Structured Programming with C. But as you can see, the other courses for the semester are set up in the LMS. So in the Structured Programming with C course, you see that the lecturer has uploaded a welcome uh, content, including a welcome note uh, for the student, and there's other content and other activities that the students are involved in in the learning management uh, system, as you can well see right there. In the School of Health Science, I'll show you two courses in the Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery. In year one, semester one, we have a couple of courses, as you can see, but I'll show you cells, tissues, and embryology. 
And as you can see here, the lecturers have uploaded content for the students to access. Here are the lecturers of that course. They have a welcome message to make the students feel welcome in their course. Are the content relevant to the students has been uploaded there. For example, you can see a study guide. You can see the course overview and the topics that are to be covered uh, in that topic. Resources have been added there so that the students have reading materials to help them deepen the understanding of the course. So you have the resources that have been uploaded there in that course. But you also have uh, interactive content for each of the topics, as you can see. I'll show you uh, the interactive content for topic one in this course. When you go to each topic, you'll find that there will normally be intended learning outcomes for that topic, what the student is expected to do by the end of the topic, and you have the indicative content. But after that, you have what we call the activities for each topic. The activities are the electronic activities that the students are expected to complete as part of the topic. And it has a purpose. It has what the student is expected to, to do. There's what we call the preparatory research. It involves um, making available to students mini lectures, videos that they can watch, guiding them to pages in certain books that are relevant to that particular topic. They have to go through this preparatory research before they complete the activities that have been added for that topic. Each activity has very clear instructions on what the student is expected to do, how the student should complete that activity, where the student should upload the final product from that activity, and the deadlines for completing each of these activities. And also, after they have worked through uh, each topic, like you can see for this, the lecturer will normally add self-reflection questions to enable the student to reflect on whether they have achieved the intended learning outcomes for that course. So that's the interactive content that we have in each of the courses. I'll now take you back to the second course that I want to show you in the Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery. And that is in year two, Anatomy of the Thorax and Abdomen. And as you can still see, the courses uh, follow a format where you have the lecturer, you have the welcome message, you have the resources that have been added there. But we also have discussion forums that the lecturers add so that the students can engage with each other in groups on the topics that have been added there by the lecturer. So for group A, for example, you can see uh, that the lecturer has added the topic for discussion, topic nine, and the students have posted their submissions on that topic. The lecturer is usually on hand to moderate the submissions in the discussion forum and to guide the students uh, in the continued uh, discussion of that topic in the learning management system. But also, the lecturers are usually, usually add uh, multiple choice quizzes in some topics so that the students can check the understanding of the concepts in that topic. For example, you can see uh, this multiple choice quiz that has been added here, and the students have been able to complete uh, that quiz. So usually, you are able to check that the students are involved in the activity in that course. You can see those are the participants that have enrolled in this course. Next, I will show you the video. So establishment of the primary heart field starts by migration of cells from the primitive streak to the cranial end of the embryo. All right, so let's look further at this. So this is what we've looked at. And as you can see in the colored adjacent pictures, as uh, we are having uh, formation of the body axis, axis and determination of uh, the laterality of uh, the different parts of the embryo. Also, 
These are cells in the primary heart field are already destined to form the different parts of the heart. Thank you for visiting and watching this demonstration. Consider Soroti University your choice for higher education.